So, hello everyone and welcome to my channel Value Chain. So today, as my first episode, I will be going through the value chain of paper clips. So since this is my first episode, I am going to explain what value chain is. So a value chain is a concept that describes the full chain of a business activities in the creation of a product or service. So there's a lot of videos that go on about how things are made. I'm not going to be focusing on those more scientific approaches, but in fact, I'm going to just briefly go through the process and stop at the more business perspectives of that particular process. So because this is a mostly business focused channel, and I found that all this information that pertains to value chains, unless you really go and individually search up each component, it is very hard to really get a full picture. So what I'm trying to do here with my channel is trying to aggregate all of this information into one video so that maybe you or I can have a better understanding of the business and possibly make better investment decisions from it. Although whatever I say do not constitute investment advice. So please consult a financial advisor if you are thinking of investing in a company that perhaps we have discussed in the video and please do not take my word for it is purely for educational purposes. So without further ado, let's look into the value chain of a paperclip. So the paperclip is a really, it's a product that we all use at home, right? Uh, it's pretty typical, very small, but we don't really appreciate how how complicated of a process uh, where it goes from a, a piece of iron ore all the way to a paper clip in our hands, right? The process is really complicated and there are many business functions that are behind it. So as you can see on the slides, it all starts with iron ore extraction. So uh, miners will go and mine iron ore in iron ore mines. And then once the iron ore is mined, they will bring it for processing. And once they are processing, and once they are processed, they will be brought, they'll be made into steel, which is ref because um, iron ore is typically uh, contains many impurities, so it turns into steel. And once the steel is produced, they will be pulled into steel wires, and finally, um, it will go into the paper clip production, and then it will turn into the final product. So where it all begins, it's the extraction of the iron ore. So the first step is the discovery of iron ore. So teams of uh, uh, engineers will try and probe the lands to see whether there are any deposits of iron ore beneath them. And it is usually really easy to find iron ore because iron ore deposits are usually really close to the surface. So the discovery of iron ore will be the first step. And then once they found a place with the iron ore, they will start digging into it a really big pit. So as you can see in the first picture right here, it's a very big pit. Usually it's about one to two kilometers wide and sometimes it can be even wider depending on how much the iron ore deposit is. So how, how they do it is that once they find a place, they've dug a hole and they can access the deposit, they will first blast the iron ore with TNT. So dynamite will be placed in the mountains uh, or the iron ore deposits and they'll be blasted into bits where it can then be dug up by the diggers and the diggers will then deposit the crushed iron ore into trucks and then the trucks will bring it out either to unload them onto a train to be shipped off to a processing plant or if the processing plant is nearby the truck uh, the truck will themselves be dropping off the iron ore into the processing plant because iron ore in its raw form uh, cannot be made into steel just yet right so the biggest iron ore producers in the world uh, are, is Vale uh, in the Karahas mines and followed by Rio Tinto. Um, if you're ever involved in the stock market or in the commodities business, I think these names should not be really, you know, should be quite well known to you. They're the largest uh, iron ore producers in the world. Uh, most of these companies, they do more than iron ore, right? They also do nickel, aluminum maybe, but in the case of this video, we'll be looking purely at iron. So Vale produces 300 million tons of iron per year, Rio Tinto does 286, BHP does 248 million tons, Fortescue does 204. Um, Fortescue um, focuses on iron ore 
and finally Anglo American uh, does uh, 61 million tons uh, produces 61 million tons in iron ore um, I don't have a lot of data on this but China also has a really respectable amount of iron ore that's produced from their countries as well as well and I think the most representative of their companies is Arm Steel when it comes to um, iron ore producing right in fact China is the third most uh, producing iron ore producing country in the world behind Australia and Brazil um, if you notice um, Pilbara mines there's a lot of companies operating there because Pilbara mines uh, is the world's largest known iron ore reserve uh, and if you really look at the map of Pilbara you can see just how big the scale uh, the iron deposits that are detected there are so um, in terms of the deposits the most abundant is Pilbara uh, in Australia, followed by Brazil, and then probably China will come in at third. So once the iron ore has been uh, shipped to the processing plant, uh, the iron ore will be ground into the size of marbles. So they'll be made into really, really small pieces uh, so that they can be ground even finer uh, into a powder. Because iron ore uh, contains a lot of impurities such as other elements like maybe uh, phosphorus, carbon or whatnot. So they, the, the processing wants to extract as much of these other impurities out from the process and you know try to get all the iron content out. Um, so the interesting thing about this um, is that uh, it is somewhat of a process uh, which is why back in the slide I put a slightly smaller bubble uh, for iron ore processing because usually uh, the iron ore miners will also be the ones that are undergoing the uh, processing themselves as well. So uh, there's not much to talk about this because it's usually all done in-house. And then the iron content will then be extracted with magnets. Once all the pure or mostly pure iron powder has been collected, they will then be added with a bit of water and also rolled together uh, with clay to turn them into iron ore pellets. Uh, so this is what they uh, name it in the industry. They call them iron ore pellets. Uh, so this form makes it easier for them uh, to melt in the next process, which is steel making. So the steel making, um, this is one of the more complicated processes uh, because they want to really bring out all the carbon out from the uh, iron ore pellets itself. And that is what distinguishes uh, what they call pig iron uh, compared uh, to steel. This is the final stage where they will forge the iron ore into steel. So the pellets are melted with blast furnaces uh, and they will add coke and limestone uh, into them. And once both of these are added, uh, they will then form molten iron. And so the impurities will separate. There will be a layer of slag on top and the molten iron will be below. So the molten iron will be drained out from the bottom and they will be sent to uh, be refined further to get rid of even more impurities. So the most typical uh, method that we all use uh, nowadays uh, to refine iron further uh, is by using the basic oxygen steel making process. So uh, the molten iron will be poured into this uh, big uh, furnace and I think scrap metal will be put into it first in order to regulate the temperature and then they'll have a lance which is like a very big blowing device that will blow high velocity oxygen pure oxygen into the mixture of the scrap metal and molten iron this helps the impurities bind to the oxygen and the resulting process will produce a lot of carbon monoxide uh, which is, I think, a bit bad for the environment. And it is also why steel making uh, is one of the largest contributors of um, greenhouse gases um, to the world. Um, this one can be improved further, but I think so far there's not much solutions uh, in order to improve this process. So after being refined further, the steels will then be rolled. So there are two rolling processes here, the hot rolling and cold rolling. So hot rolling is them rolling the steel when it's hot and uh, you know it is the typical way uh, for like the more industrial applications of iron but 
for our case, uh, our uh, for for paper clips, the iron, the molten iron will be cold rolled, and then they'll be cold rolled into different shapes such as billets, sheets, or slabs. Uh, for our case, billets will be the most useful, and billets is what we see um, in, in the picture. So it's like a bar of iron. So if you see, uh, most of the steel makers in the world um, is from China. China has the most um, steel makers, uh, I think, they, they house the largest steel makers in the world. And then uh, you can see Bao Wu. Uh, is number one and it's by a huge margin uh, as they make 120 million tons of steel. Uh, the next would be ArcelorMittal uh, in Luxembourg where they process 79.3 million tons uh, of steel followed by Arn Steel in China again uh, for 55.6 million tons and Nippon Steel in Japan uh, for 49.4 million tons and finally we have another Chinese company Shagang Group uh, that processes 44.2 million tons of steel. So as you can see, a huge concentration of these uh, steel makers, the biggest steel makers in the world come from China. And this will be an important point to keep in mind later in the process of uh, making paper clips. And you'll see why. So after the steel has come out, uh, the billets will then be brought into a steel wire production plant. So these billets will be pulled through a device called a die uh, where a thick where it tries to minimize the diameter of the billet that comes in so it, it goes through a furnace that's reheated and then it will be pulled through the die so that as you can see here the diameter of this is, is uh, larger and then when it comes up the other side it's smaller because of the narrowing uh, the narrowing entry and and uh, and the more narrow exit right so the thinner you want your diameter to go uh, the more of these dies will be required so once uh, let's say for example you want a really thin uh, steel wire so there'll be a lot of dies that con continuously pulls the wire until it reaches the specific uh, diameter or the specification that the customer will need Right, the notable company for this is uh, Baycard. Uh, Baycard. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it correctly, but Baycard produces all this machinery. Uh, I think they're the world leader in making uh, steel wire formations and coatings. So, in the video that I'll be talking about steel wire, we will probably involve uh, Baycard quite a lot. So after the wire has come out. As you know, steel itself, it's, uh, it rusts when it's exposed to air and also moisture. In order to improve the durability of this steel, uh, most of these steel wires, because uh, at this point uh, it will be in a wire form, will be galvanized. So what is galvanizing? Galvanizing is basically um, putting a layer of zinc onto the, the steel wires so that it is more rust resistant. It doesn't rust as easy. So, as you can see, the wire is pulled through a mixture of a leak of a hot zinc bath, and it goes back up. So and then it forms into a spool where that is then uh, shipped to the customer. And now finally, we come to the paper clip production. So the spools of galvanized steel wires will then be shipped to a paper clip factory, and then the and then a worker will then put one of these spools of wire in into the machine they'll feed one strand into it and then the strand will start pulling and then once it pulls the one strand of metal there'll be something like a wheel where it keeps working and the paper clip will then be bent by this machine into this shape so there's three bends and then finally the blade will come in and cut it off once the paper clip has been bended and once it cuts off it drops into a box uh, where it will then be packaged and sold to the consumers. So there's a very good YouTube video about this. Um, if you go to YouTube and you search for how paper clips are made, you'll be able to easily get what I'm talking about, about the process. I'm not the best when it comes to describing these kind of mechanical movements, so excuse me, but I would recommend you go to the YouTube channel. I'll probably also attach 
a link in the description so that you will be able to find the video even more easily. So now I'm going to talk about the overview of the paperclip industry. Now that we have gotten a clear view on the process or the value chain that the paperclip industry goes through, um, now it's good to look at the overall business, right? So the largest producer of uh, paper clips or the largest exporter of paper clips in the world um, is China. So China exports a vast majority of the paper clips in the world at $166 million. While the US comes in only at second place at about $7.2 million worth. However, if you're ever thinking of starting a company or whatnot in this industry, um, the advice uh, is to not because usually people want to go to more stable or you know growing industries but the paperclip industry to be honest is actually slowing or even stagnant because the demand for paper products is slowing as people all transition towards more eco-friendly options such as ebooks uh, even documents and whatnot are now all online pdf so the long-term outlook of this industry is not great and the margins are also not very high, given that the paperclip has existed for, I think, about 200 years now, or 100 odd. Um, it has become a very efficient and very commoditized business. So given in this low margin environment, the only way truly for a company to win um, is by volume. Which brings me to the next point as to why China is dominating the paperclip industry. So the main point that um, China is able to dominate this um, is because of their vicinity to steel producers. Remember when I mentioned in the beginning why having a lot of steel makers in China is important? Well, it's because of this. This gives Chinese paperclip manufacturers the added advantage of not being of not having to take into consideration transportation costs or they need to but it's not much of a number compared to maybe American producers of paper clips so they can just literally ship um, the 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 steel billets from one of the uh, steel mills or steel producers very close vicinity they come they start bending the paper clips into shape and they can sell it at a very very cheap price right and this is actually also similar to many other steel derived products uh, China is able to manufacture it cheaper than other countries simply because of their vicinity to um, the steel mills. And of course, China also has a way cheaper labor compared to most Western countries. So what ha what's happening in the business is that a lot of brands, they usually just outsource their production uh, to Chinese paperclip makers. So because it's not really economically um, efficient, to manufacture paper clips themselves since they won't be able to outcompete China in terms of the cost of production. So they'll just outsource their production to Chinese paper clip companies, uh sorry, paper clip manufacturers, and they just package it with their own package. And that's a reason that's the reason why China dominates the paper clip industry in the world. Alright? So I think this is a pretty uh, what's that called? It's a pretty con, uh, pretty comprehensive view on the paperclip industry in general. Um, I'll be making videos uh, on iron ore processing, steel production, and steel wire production in the future in order to further expand into the scope. Because the inspiration of my channel uh, is basically I started looking at um, all these different industries and it started from a paperclip. And then I realized after that it expands infinitely so let's say for example uh, during the mining process let's say the trucks so i'm going to be pulled into making a video on how um, trucks for mining are made or maybe even how trains are made and the relevant parties that are involved there so i'll definitely be making more detailed videos but i hope this is a good start to the channel and it will keep you hooked to my future videos so make sure to subscribe like the video if you enjoyed it and take care everyone uh, thank you so much for watching the video goodbye